Marcel, beautiful people. Day two of the Starseed Origin reading. So yesterday was blood ancestry to do with your cells and the ancestors here on Earth before you. Today we're going to start looking into how that story links to your galactic ancestry, so your consciousness. And so all you need to do, well, mm, see, I was going to say is follow the same shirt, but mm, maybe start that way, but look into all of them perhaps, because there are clues in all of the messages that kind of join up, because we are everything. Wassail. So it's day two for the flower shirt. Reading cycle narrative. <laughs> the, I've still got yesterday's cards in front of me. And we're going to add the next layer of the Tessa code. This is, well, it's your galactic ancestry story. Not taking the one that flipped, but I will take those two as the three and the six. We just need one for the nine. I can't tell that one because I saw it. I can't know ahead that one. Now we'll get the one, two, four, eight, seven, five. So that's number one, two, let's keep going, Ooh, that was exciting, so that will be four, this one will be eight, I'm going to take, oh look, two, seven and five. So now we're looking at the layer that's about the galactic ancestry of your consciousness. Yeah, it may be, we'll see, tied, because it was earlier. But when we uh, connect to this galactic layer, there's something else going on. So let's begin with your new 3-6. Ooh, look, all your senses, Ula, wisdom. This is a beautiful energy, people, just to say, Moving, because this stays with you, but the next layer of it is all of your senses. Really open. And then we have, oh, look. That's just gorgeous. So I have to, have to do that. So this is your new layering. The echoes of these are not forgotten. But this is the new layering. All of your... Hmm. All of your senses are being um, enlivened. But there's another... There's another sense. You see, that's interesting. So we have sight, smell, taste hearing, feeling, touch, but now I'm getting this energy of the next sense is heart-based. I don't know how to describe it because it's not really feeling, knowing, a heart-based knowing, but there's something about this energy as it goes out, your galactic energy, where your heart begins reading things like it's all all of those other senses combined coming out and just data extracting <laughs> oh I, mm, it's kind of like a, an akashic feeler because look wherever it is and that hasn't come through yet uh <laughs> until i said that no, I don't want to tell you where you're from galactically. I think that that has to be something 
that's your own epiphany because look I know that part of I'm from everywhere you're from everywhere but there are key frequencies that keep repeating that are more regular I know you've been to cosmic university a billion times that's where you began your fascination with exploring earth because that was one of the modules that you took <laughs> But there are, we're not being given the full picture in most practices, most readings, when people just keep reading off the same old, same old names that were put out there a few, you know, decades ago. Um, and so I'm going to leave your origins and your, to your own unfolding, because you're going to be surprised. It's not one of the ones that you've always thought it is. That's the energy I get. It's something way further back. It almost, it doesn't have a name. It has a light language and the light language can't be made in the physical world. This is a light language that only exists in a vacuum and it's a light language as in it's a frequency and that's to do with this energy again of the Akashic heart feelers, you'll know. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so this is your new energy. Feeling the Akashic layers, that's what your tribe does. That's interesting, just in itself. And then, where do you begin? Look, Cosmic Conjurer. You are a wizard, Harry. <laughs> you're not called Harry and you're not from Hogwarts. Okay, just so that you know. So Pisces, this is telling me you are galactic shaman, cosmic wizard. You finally let go of the rotten egg cosmic, the rotten egg earth bound bloodline ancestral stories that's where you start now this is wizardry because in uh in the magnum opus of alchemy this is projection this is when you can project past this is golden path space but is there something other than that there's like a galactic highway to the heart going on then we have opposition, see, quantum entangled souls. I will show you these in a picture, just because I felt suddenly like I was flashing them by. So you're studying, you've been, you studied to become, I want to just say galactically impressive. <laughs> quantum entangled songs and cover versions. You've done the song, you've done the old blood song. Now it's the cover version, and the cover version is the galactic wizard, you. And then that gets put through this Akashic senses, and those Akashic senses are here to hold you in... You see, that's really interesting, both in time and outside of time. Or having that ability, it's like your wholeness is in time. Before, when you were at university, you put your arm through and you touched earth. Now you're in Earth and you're putting your hand out and touching the other way around. It's a mirror. Gemini, it's a new atomic blueprint. And because of your inner working story, it's love. You just, you are the frequency. All that you do and explore is with a sense of love. So then, moving that energy tribally, galactically, out into, you see, not the earth now. I'm feeling like you're reaching beyond the dimensions of earth. <sighs> Look at this. Triny, whiny, beautiful, melodious, cosmic comfort. Hmm. You see, I'm getting this energy of grand trines, uh, of being, exploring. 
all elements, but you do each one, one at a time. There's some part of your body, the five original senses were somehow connected. You'll understand this. Well, you need to, you need to understand it. You need to create a philosophy that embodies this in your being. But you explore each of the elements, including spirit, with the different senses. And that's almost like a kind of, it's a rotational thing where you might move and it's all earth sign. It's held through earth energies, cellular, atomic energies, atomic blueprint. And that might be for you that something that you just hear. It might be something that you scent. It might be something that you taste. It's that energy of synesthesia. It's that frequency where all of the senses are becoming one Akashic heart. And then, look, soot. It's almost... Mm. So you are reaching out with this Akashic heart feeler. It's interesting because there's five senses and then the wholeness is your consciousness interpreting. Um, you witness, you're now witnessing the beauty in all form, but you're then breaking every aspect of that down individually. That's what that thing about going through into their separate components. You see, this has got four. You analyze one microscopically, macroscopically, I don't know. Because this, this, your ancient civilization. You see, as soon as I said you're ancient, I don't want you to think you're an older soul than anybody else. Because also, all of them, everyone's old. That's something you know. Do you? Anyway, we're all as old as each other. We just go on different pathways to tell a different story to the divine. So your tribal groupings story has been analysing, seeking patterns within the physical world. Because before that, your tribal galactic cosmic grouping were behind the veil. And they studied being in the veil. But to do that, they had to reach into that space and slowly they were pulled in and they became a very, you know, as I said earlier, you, you, your tribe has been amoeba to humans through apes and dogs and spiders and trees and plants and water. You've explored being all these different aspects and you've categorised them and brought them down so that they're maker molecules. This is pilot waves and gravitational aether. Your tribe, group, ancestral family built prehistory. Okay, and then the final one, you see, look, it is. That's what you did. You condensed ideas. Virgo, condensing ideas. Distillation, refining, seeking and sorting. That's what you've done as a group and somehow, and I don't know, mm, it's like, I feel like a, a mm, how can I describe it? It's like you're being called back together because it's time to review what each of you has discovered. But to do that, you merge as a group. You, you become a singularity. I don't know. You become an organic crop circle of knowingness and sharing knowledge. And you've been that before on the other side, but you're coming back to be in the physical and that's, I'm being, I'm hearing, I'm understanding. That's a big thing. Because throughout history, you, you were all separated to explore 
aspect and now there's some kind of gathering or convention and it's going to be the first time you've all met up in the physical that's like the end of part of a journey here wisdom be on the book. wisdom be on the book cover so let's look at the divine nine here Ah, oh, you see look is 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 it's the first stroke from consciousness to the physical. And that was oh so very long ago. And yet, as soon as I saw this card, because of this unanchoring and re-anchoring, there's something in here about this dimensional timeline shifting from one to the other. But first of all, with this gathering, has to be stripped back. It's only, it's like the whole of your tribe gets back together, downloads data, discusses, whatever it is that you do, and then your consciousness binds into one single agreed consciousness to thread through to wherever it is that we're going to see you're going tomorrow. <laughs> so... Oh, look, I need to give you a little ceramic ponderance to think about. I love these. Well, this is the first one I've done. I'm loving the story. So look, you have Oaths. You have Godmouth. Estuary. Triple Point Paragon. The point at which two freshwater consciousnesses merge with the saline of the physical world. The saline has something to do with materialising the physical. So you've got this energy. I oh, see, I can't say that yet because I think it's about tomorrow's, but it's to do with Oceanus. So then you've got. 51 Elks, protection, that is 51, no, ooh, it's 62, that's interesting, like there's, <clears throat> there's a hidden game, hmm, <sighs> once this tribal recognition comes along, you will understand the joke behind a hidden game. And then you've got water gopal. This is so much to do with the lagoon. The, well, look, the rivers, the seas, the source of the springs, the waters beneath the earth's crust, the waters within us, the divinity of the waters, but also the, the space between the moon and the sun, which is the lagoon, and then the ofa lagoon, these higher dimensional things. Look, this... It's your birthright. But the thing is, so I can see you as an energy at that galactic university learning about Earth and life on Earth. But you, you're, you can only understand down here in Earth that little bit. You can't take all of this with you. You can't take your entire birthright with you. But what's been happening is, as you've been learning, the size of the energy of you has grown from amoeba through to, you know, bacterias, fish, and, and getting ever grander. You've been dinosaurs, you've been, you've been bigger, but brain size smaller, who knows? I don't know the full understanding of how it works. But look, this... Is this so this was the ending the divine ending of your first story your second one ends with being just a group bound consciousness understanding all the studies that you've all been doing as a group oh so the energy of psychic archivists has just entered 
but this is the shape that must be uh, lost, refound, understood. There's something in this, this and this that you need to think about in terms of organic multi-dimensional <laughs> sacred geometry. Multi-dimensional sacred geometry. And it's a trove. It's a spear. It's recognizing that something, including you perhaps, began with a particular purpose and now you have unfolded into a purpose that you didn't anticipate. Okay? So, day three. I don't know. Did I say earlier that it's like a divinity? I don't know. But let's see what comes in the third part of your story. We'll see you. There's something about um, like um, stretching, stretching to release tension, stretching to release pains to release heartaches and to release suppression scream and shout if you need to mm. so i have the i have your story laid down now we're going to put the next layer onto it so we need the 369 oh there we go <clears throat> of the next layer of your galactic <clears throat> story. There's something here about reaching a pinnacle, reaching a peak, and then feeling surplus to needs. Um, so I did a reading once in Sardinia and it was about moments when species make enormous leaps. So like here, Stone Age to Iron Age, we're looking at something in that region, I think... I just, I still think you were, you were stone experts. And then metal came along and you were kind of shunned. And yet you were the nobility or the beauty that created that first wondrous moment where we created, painted. So there's artists artist in this the impoverished artist that kind of narrative that's really interesting because you spoke less and you thought connected you drew you experienced through shape and art form sculpture standing stones all of that's coming through the iron age was your ruin or your ancestral it was a marker in ancestral while other groups blossomed and flourished. Ah, oh, but you see, now I'm being told it's not as simple as everything ended. <clears throat> then your narrative had a new flourishing in sculpture. Marble, oh, so different kind of rock, different kind of tools. It's interesting. So two fell out, but they're face down, so I can actually put them in. So that's one, three, one, two, four. Now we need... I didn't see that one. There's also another one here. 
And that one was very, very excited. So that's eight, seven. There's not one showing itself. Let's go here in, I don't want to see it though. So that's five. So, I'm not sure how you achieved your alignment with the natural world to bring an end to this story and begin your new story, because there has to be an epiphany that you work your way through. This is the next layer that you'll be working on. So, ache. see ache is that thing that goes from small to large from tiny to colossus and that was your original energy it's like there's a frequency when you connect to your galactic truth you're gonna feel huge you're gonna feel a massive surge See, it's talking about the fungal network, but it's out there. It's the outside. It's a cosmic myceum, uh, Hagal, hailstones. But it also talks about Orthumbula at the beginning of time, nurturing, feeding Ymir, the giant. <clears throat> don't know what this means but it's like seeing Emir and each you and all the rest of this tribe galactic family each one of you is like, I want to say an atom or a cell or a bacteria, my CM. You were some kind of energy <clears throat> that animated giants, animated giants. Together, you control the Eotensia. That's you are bigger as a collective than as an individual. You are acorn alone with all the coding to the oak tree, the giant. And this freezing is like coming together as a kind of frozen, static, a stasis to animate. You are a colony. You are like a kind of collective puppet master of molecules, giant molecules, 299 or 929. This is interesting. Really fascinating. So let's go with your molecules now. Because you, you, you are the consciousness inside a micro macro cell <laughs> that's animating. It's like pulling in minerals, uh, frequencies. You are the consciousness, the psychic energy animating a collection of atoms on a huge scale. It's almost like being gravitational aether and pulling together you and all of the clan to create star systems, I want to say. Anyway, let's go on. Yeah, look, conjunction, I am mutual. 
you all come into a conjunction, you align with others and you're invigorated by that experience. Connectivity. I want to say um, I'm being, I'm seeing the visual of a dam um, holding back water. It's almost like when you come together, you can then capture and build up things, resources to be utilized through a group focused intention. Amazing. Mm, see an air, edit, thought. It's all about mind. Logical, clear thinking, cerebral accord, coming together as a as a hive mind, as a one mind, as a collective frequency. And there really is no queen bee, no worker bees. It's completely different. You're all worker bees in some way, or action bees. And you work together because at this level of your galactic tribe, you are just all the same thing. This is like the energy of over spirit, over soul. Because an over soul is a current narrative and you are in a current narrative. But really that energy is an over spirit because it's endless. It's just that the soul tells me that it has a current mission. And your current mission is just, it's gentle wind chimes. You are the oxygen to a solar system. You're mature. This is quite high level. It feels like your level's going upwards. Part of the story of the other one was going in another direction and they're all valid. But this is a, this is almost like peak experience. Oh, they were on peak experience though. But I think theirs is the reverse. Anyway, yours is a, not the same story, but it's a similar galactic experience. You're reaching peak collective before you suddenly go we need to separate and explore again this is building see i wanted to say building the pyramid and and the card has it and it's almost like this is the level you're on and when this energy reaches across here then all the molecules break down again but at the moment, it's peak experience, it's peak growth on a cosmic, galactic, soul, spirit level. This is like traveling the whale song lines, not the dragon lines. I know they were there because that's the physical world. We're talking now about galactic, so we're talking now about whale songs. So, the ne <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> oh, so you've got the dragon and the whale. It's just, seriously, these are so beautiful. They're quite exhausting. This one's making me sweat. The last one was just incredibly beautiful. This one's, it is again, it's a beautiful story. Don't get me wrong but they're so incredibly complicated to pull from up there, down here, and give them to you as word that makes, that hopefully makes sense and helps you in some way. So yeah, moon in Scorpio, because you see this energy of moving up, at some point it reaches its total peak and then it goes in a new direction. And that's like this portal of redeath. But we have many ones of those on Earth. So to come into consciousness in human vessel, whether it be Neanderthal or Homeo sapien, Homo sapien, Homeo, <laughs> homeopathy, um, it requires 
you stepping away from this, this collectiveness. Some piece of you has to break away from that wondrous collective energy, that supportive network of cosmic myceum and be embodied. And it's like, a, it's like you died. And now you're trying to birth yourself. It was a redeath and birth. Besting Bet Noirs, Soul Realm Recreation. You. <laughs> it's, I'm seeing Orthumbler singing a lullaby to Emir. And yet you're part of Emir. <clears throat> Let's go and see what your galactic inheritance is doing in the real galaxy, not just the emotional thought one. So here we have Saturn. This was the card that was dancing. Um, so the golden age of Saturn is what's coming through. The golden age of Saturn... Oh, that's interesting. The golden, <laughs> should I just say that eight times? The golden age of Saturn. When Saturn was once a bronze sun before there was a cataclysm and everything got shunted around, in the golden age of Saturn, in the golden age of Saturn, there were no rules, there was just harmoniousness. <clears throat> <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my voice because that's this energy that we had at the beginning. This so in the golden <laughs> in the golden age of Saturn, there were there was no need for rules because this is exactly it, non-judgmental. People were making judgments because you were working as a collective. You were in conjunction with each other. It's now you see that's interesting. Sun and Jupiter conjunction. Is this the age of Jupiter? Because Jupiter's the big bugger. Maybe it is. Oh uh, yeah, it's an age of Aquarius, don't get me wrong. But what I mean is is in planetary terms, you know, the biggest planet is is Jupiter. And yeah, Jupiter represents jovial joy. So why are we not all happy? I leave that with you. It might be part of a question that's to do with your tribe. So this is divine masculine energy. This is actioning beauty, peace, joy, wonder, being a sacred world walker. But I think that it's this visual of you walking as giants. The giant's causeway. Standing stones. I'm just getting, there's a lot about giants in your reading. And this was one of the Titans, wasn't it? <laughs> this feels like there was no pain. In this golden age of Saturn, that you remember as a tribe, there was no pain. There was no judgment. There were no rules. There was just joyful, peaceful living. That's the tribal frequency you come from. But also there's something about this that that was also your, your ancestral Neanderthal frequency. And we keep saying that they were, you know, aggressive, dumb savages. That there's something in that energy. So seven, moon in Capricorn. You see, I'm immediately being taught kind of historic distortion. So Capricorn, Cardinal Earth. You had mutable Earth, Virgo, in the first layer. But this is a lie because... It's meant to be the mer goat. It's part fish, part Pisces. 
there's something that this is again that restriction this isn't the full truth this is like <clears throat> being made to conform this was what broke the age of Saturn, I wanted to say then, but I'm like, what broke the age of Saturn? Saturn, a cataclysm? Wasn't something they were doing. I have to move and hold that. Sanctuary architects. Being safe, ocean of strength. Leading a Mergo truth. We need to sit with that for a minute. Let's take the next one down on this reading. I knew that that was coming ages ago. It just got a flash. Embers. <clears throat> there was a cataclysm. There was something that broke the sanctuary not just the architecture of the planet, but the whole solar system. There was a cataclysm that reduced a cosmic crisis that split apart your unity, your collective, that was just living joyfully. And, and it, it broke the golden path. That's your golden age of Saturn. That got shattered. Stella Nursery. It's getting dark suddenly. Like this story. <laughs> because this is... There's almost something where you're like... What would be the point of deifying... Down here... When... What I somehow have a remembrance of in the back of my mind is this joyful unified peaceful amalgamation of living in the golden age of saturn let's turn your divine nine here interesting 12th static needs it's like your divine energy is you, all of your galactic ancestors coming together into this giant energy that bridges one time period to another. Interesting. Like a giant bridge, a cultural bridge, pathway. World bridges, realm bridges. It's like when you come together, you become like a circuit that can carry primordial information and literally deliver it into the dry earth molecules. It's like you're, as a giant tribal being, you tune in with your mind as a group collective and you're able to retune the futures of of future planners of the known paths you have been able to weave worlds stellar nurseries but it needs all of you otherwise it's kind of half remembered maybe anyway that's see that's a big story i'm after going to have a lie down i definitely can't do the next one this evening it's getting a bit gloomy unless the sun comes back out so let's give you some rooms to ponder some ceramics until you get your third part tomorrow interesting just three Look, sigil, life force. This, um, this is some kind of beacon symbol to your tribe. It's like a bat signal shining out. And then candle, 
the microscopic size of an elephant. There's something, when you come together, you recognize your candles and then your power is as 144,000 or whatever your tribal number is. It's to the power of, that's the mathematics in the music. The empathic luminosity is the power of focused intention, conjunction, narrative. I almost want to say your we see you as, you know, stellar nurseries where stars are being born and formed and you're capable of taking as a group, as a galactic family, the energy of great, calm, beautiful civilizations from the age of Saturn and lining up that energy, creating a bridge for that energy to go into the new system being born, like setting the DNA in the acorn. That's what you're doing. Yeah, and night. And you seal it into into a darkness to incubate. Well, go away and think about that for 24 hours. <laughs> and then come back tomorrow, look for the shell shirt and you will get the final part. I feel like you might have just been given it already, but look, I don't know. There could be a whole other layer which I've got to get through yet. So see you tomorrow. So welcome back. This is part two. Um, we're going to be looking at, well, I guess perhaps your galactic serpent. It's like Ophiuchus frequency. So I'm just selecting your cards. Part one is your divine nine. Now let's get your molecules. So that one has to be number one. This one can be number two. That one there can be number four. This can be number eight. Seven. And five. I can't tell you how excited I am. <laughs> doing these so uh let's look at your new three so in terms of your galactic inner work oh, look that's so interesting three six seven four there's something gathered channeled to hatch to harvest and this feels elven, elven light. This is kind of like a bigger frequency than you're anticipating. So with your man, card 20, you've also got the future. I'm suddenly really parched, like I haven't hatched for too long. Oh, look, and this is in the nest. And this is like the cosmic egg. It's like the cosmic egg has been being held back by the elven ring. It's been being barred from hatching until the earth one has risen up. You see, it's so interesting. I've had a lot of stories over the years of the cosmic serpent, our consciousness coming down and kind of enticing this to rise. This is different. This is a slow burn energy. This is an energy that requires a kind of earthbound alignment. And I want to say with Pluto, it's that energy of moving into Aquarius, 19th of November energy. 
it could also be that this, they can't let this down until the earth, there's something about this being a collective egg. And the egg rising is a collective egg, like it's, because these are the two eggs here coming together, but there's something, I think this links to that story of releasing uh, a galactic tribe already here on Earth from a centaur bubble so that they can be a collective Kundalini. Maybe that's their gift. I don't know. But that's what's coming across at the entrance to the port gate of the future grows the tangled tapestry of the bleak briar forest. Unpick the future pathways built from the pains you project from your heart space. See, I want to say there's a party in the Elven Ring, but it's like a baby shower, but it's been going on and on and on and on and on because they can't let this energy burst down because it would it would come down and there would be nothing to greet it. This is about timing between earth energies and cosmic energies through you and them. So let's turn with dragon fire. Blasting brass section. You see this gentleness. This is too dazzling. This has been held back because it's such a light. I know in this realm where the earthbound elven connection that you have are trapped, it's just light. And they've built more and more light as they've had more and more ideas, but it's almost too intense. It has to be, it's so poimander powerful. It's such a strong energy. It needs gentle release. Almost like pulling in a skein of wool. Just needs each little bit to come forward slowly. Don't, don't burn the world because there's something about if this energy is too bright, this light won't come down. This, this has to come up and it has to adjust. It's almost like when you walk out from a dark space into the light and you can't see. That's the energy I'm getting. They won't be able to see at first. Time is needed. So there's something about the 19th is definitely connected to this release of this ancestral group. But they're a cosmic ancestral group, galactic tribe. But then time is needed before... It's almost like they want to shower you with gifts, but it's too much. So it all has to be really calm and organic all I can find in this at the moment this need to slow down and be organic part two psyche so here you've got Characlo and psyche they're seeking home but you can't they're seeking here they're seeking the elven ring but they can't go there yet because they've been They've not been there for a long time. I don't think, I don't think over the millennia that they now remember the tunes. It's like they don't remember the songs. There's half remembrances because of all this. All of this trying to find solutions has created new signature melodies. It just needs time. 
to adjust. So down here, Libra, it needs time to balance, like Dej. You see, th th this has sublimation, solid to gas. Solid to gas, missing out water. Because they've been trapped under the water, they're, they're, they're kind of have a natural fear now of water, but they've got to, they've got to get used to the need to go through all stages, solid to liquid to gas. Yes, you can jump them, but it's like they would, it's, they can't, it's not, it's not allowed. <laughs> I don't know why. But it has to be slower, slowing down. So then in the outside world, look, soot, it's almost like that. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like if they tried to rush back, they would be shattered. It's a bit like the Aquafarians. Interesting, I would say that the aquafarians are from the first water world the first world of physical emotions so to be frightened of water would actually be to be frightened of your home your origins your first feelings and it's leaving carbon massa confuser so, Confusa, very warm-hearted incubation that's been taking place to release this because it has to be slowly incubated. Again, pausing. Um, So there's this carnal energy within this community. They've been stuck in physical form, unable to get out. And there's a kind of, there's a lust for life that's become so intense that if it were us, we would literally throw up as we came into the new energy. This is a weird one. So yeah, look. The next card down, the seven, is remove. Acknowledging errors. I'm just feeling into this. Why acknowledging errors? Slowing to see. I think, I think, and there's nothing wrong with this. I think this tribal galactic was trying to be inorganic, to be scientific, but to speak speed up some kind of process and this group had to be slowed down. Um, what does it say here? Yeah, inverted, but the inverted as in their world was turned inside so that they were almost in a very slow stasis light it's been very emotional and these emotions need to be calmed organically they need to be removed they need to be released Let's see what the last one is see look it's so beautiful there is an organic Philosopher's Stone. It's almost like, 
if this happens too quickly, oh, they learned this. They understood something. They were trying to speed up evolutionary energies and it shattered the Philosopher's Stone. It disconnected the conscious, the two snakes. It was the snakes that were ruptured. And now there's a kind of energetic fear between the locking in fully of the two snakes because it doesn't want to do this again. So pleased we got that. Because I was beginning to stress me out. I don't mean that these people did something wrong. It's all experimental galactic play. That's the innocence almost that has to exist. It's really fascinating. So the Divine Nine, oh, that's so good. That's to be cradled and comforted. It's almost like time out. It was almost like being put on the naughty step. Um, it wasn't that they'd been naughty. It was just they needed... They were trying to grow up too quickly and the universe wanted to say, enjoy innocence, enjoy youthfulness, enjoy play. But because they were somehow linked now to physical form, to this space, they just needed a little bit of time out. They needed time to calm, to... To sort of, it's like, you know, you can watch children play and children can be destructive and children can be nursing, nurturing. But there's nothing wrong in either way. We just try to nudge them to a morality that we say is correct. And it's no different here. That's so weird. Before I went into this reading, I was really picking up on the energy of like a galactic nursery and then I just let go of it like being mothered or having a nanny being nannied and that's all this is this is just sometimes galactic life needs a little nannying not in any demonstrative way um, everything that happens has to happen. It's all an exploration of the divine and self through a collective mind. But sometimes, I don't know, it's a little like I'm sort of seeing, you know, Marie Curie, the scientist, did the most amazing things, but the objects she worked with, uranium and things, they killed her. And this is no different. It's an innocence that approaches power, um, I don't want to say inappropriately, I don't know what to say, but just approaches power and there is a kind of disruption energy that naturally happens that creates a problem, a problem or a hiccup. It needs to be something insignificant in its description because it feels massive and yet it's merely just a little tiny uh -huh in the grander scheme of things. And I think that's an energy that's been played into your ancestral line that mountains are molehills. Yeah, it's all a molehill. Everything's a molehill. Nothing is the problem you think it is. And that seems to be part of the storytelling. So I'm going to give you some Rooney Rooney runes in ceramic to ponder overnight before you get the final part of this story. We've got Tawadness now twice. So think about the future. <laughs> it's not demonstrative. And then look, you've got hell, 
the returning light. Returning light to the future and then protection. It's asking you to, to question the protection. I can't say any more than that, apparently. Question the protection. Okay. I, uh, question the protection that you believe you require. That will be okay to just push you a little bit further. Okay, so day three, the completion of this tale. Where you come from. Well, sort of. <laughs>